Welcome back to 504 Road Trips. Today we're going to drive the I-94 business loop east through Mandan in Bismarck, North Dakota. One of the first things we want to point out is this guide sign on the side of the loop. Notice that the interstate shield is red and blue as if we were on the main line of the interstate. This is one of the many oddities we've noticed throughout North Dakota, although most of it wasn't captured well on camera. We'll see another more glaring error towards the end of today's video. Also note Red Tomahawk's profile on the North Dakota Highway sign. We saw more of these on this trip than we did the new state-shaped shield, so obviously they're not in any rush to replace the older signs. Here we've moved sufficiently far from the I-94 main line and I-94 business makes a 90 degree left turn and heads for the Mandan city limits. A sign to the right indicates that this is a North Dakota scenic byway. We're running the video at double speed until we get into town. Just a reminder, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it to be notified of when our new videos come out. And hit the like button if you enjoy our videos. Here at our second crossing of the Hart River, we enter the city of Mandan. Mandan was founded in 1879 on the western bank of the Upper Missouri River. The city is named after the historic indigenous Mandan tribe of the area. As of 2018, Mandan had a population of 22,519. As part of the Bismarck-Mandan Metropolitan Statistical Area, the area has been reportedly ranked in the top five on both the Forbes list of best small places for business and careers and the Milken Institute's best small cities list. In 2013, Mandan was selected a finalist in Rand McNally's most patriotic city competition. The Mandan Business District is about three quarters of a mile long and only about two blocks wide and is mostly on our left. 
beyond the business district is suburbia all the way to I-94. On our right is a BNSF rail yard. I-94 business is called Main Street through town. On the right is the former Northern Pacific Freight House built in 1910. Railroad officials boasted at the time that the new freight house was the largest and most elaborate building of the kind between the Twin Cities and the West Coast. As of 2007, the building is home to the Martin Mandan Public Library. On the left at 3rd Avenue is the Lewis and Clark Building, built as the Lewis and Clark Hotel in 1917 at a cost of $200,000. Directly across the street on the right is the former Northern Pacific Mandan Passenger Train Station. On the left at 100 West Main is the first National Bank building built in 1906. The bank moved to a new facility in the 1960s and has since been absorbed by Wells Fargo, but the original building continues to house several commercial services in the heart of the city. The engraved First National Bank sign remains over the front entrance. At Collins Avenue, West Main Street becomes East Main Street and North Dakota Highway 1806 joins us for a few blocks. State Highways 1806 and 1804, which we'll see later in this video, were named to reflect the years of Lewis and Clark's travels through the area. Sections of the highway are known as part of the Lewis and Clark Trail. At 6th Avenue, the concurrency with State Highway 1806 turns to the south with the final destination of the South Dakota border. Here we turn right onto Memorial Highway and pass under the railroad tracks and head for Bismarck.
Here we see another sign anomaly. The sign on the left uses a blue and red interstate shield next to Main Avenue, although it obviously refers to I-94 business which should have a green shield. The Bismarck Expressway here is a not yet signed spur of I-94 that has been designated I-194. We cross the Missouri River here on the Liberty Memorial Bridge. The original bridge that stood in this location was a Warner Turner through truss structure built in 1920. It was the first roadway bridge built across the Missouri River in North Dakota and was the final link in the coast to coast roadway later designated as US Highway 10. The current bridge was built in 2008. Here we enter Burley County in the city of Bismarck, the capital city of North Dakota. Bismarck is the second most populous city in North Dakota. As of 2018, 73,112 people live within the city limits. Here, Memorial Highway turns off to the right and the business loop becomes Main Avenue through town. On the left at the corner of Mandan Street is the L.J. Anderson Building. The International Harvester Company constructed the building in 1911 as its local warehouse. It was later occupied by the Conrad Publishing Company from 1954 to 1968. It then became the Anderson Building and now houses the Bismarck Antiques Mall among other businesses. On the right is the Camp Hancock State Historic Site. This site preserves part of a military installation established as Camp Greeley in 1872 to provide protection for work gangs then building the Northern Pacific Railroad. The camp's name was changed to Camp Hancock in 1873. On the left at the corner of 5th Street is a historic hotel, which opened on New Year's Day in 1911 as the McKenzie Hotel. At the time it opened, the 10-story, 150-room hotel was the tallest structure in Bismarck and would retain this distinction until the new North Dakota State Capitol was completed in 1934. The hotel was renamed the Patterson Hotel in 1927. The hotel was home to the Nonpartisan League 
and well known for its continued construction that lasted over 20 years. The hotel was a major hotspot for politicians throughout the 1960s. The Patterson ceased hotel operations sometime in the 1970s, and the rooms were converted into senior housing. The main lobby now houses the Peacock Alley American Bar and Grill. Here's another sign that doesn't seem to belong here. It directs the left two lanes to Business I-94, although we're already on it. Also, use of the word business is redundant since the shield has the word business in the top of it. Just the shield would have been enough. Another sign coming up in about two blocks lacks the unnecessary word too. The state capitol is down the road to the left. Unfortunately, it's about a half mile off the business loop, so we didn't get any video of it. Here we see a bit of a traffic pile up and there's an accident up ahead at the railroad tracks. It appears that the single car involved may have been struck by a crossing train or maybe it ran into some invisible object, but the real reason for the traffic backup in the right lane is that this is people waiting to get into the drive through line for a big boy restaurant.
Here the business loop turns left onto the East Bismarck Expressway and we're going to see our final sign anomaly in this video. You may have noticed this one in the thumbnail for the video. In this case, the green I-94 business loop shield has the letter I next to the 94 inside the shield. There is no way this is MUTCD compliant. Search for that on Facebook. There's a whole group dedicated to that sort of thing. For anyone who doesn't know, MUTCD stands for Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and dictates the standards for signs and traffic control devices throughout the United States. In order for municipalities to receive Federal Highway 8 funding for this sort of thing, they have to have a certain percentage of compliance or be moving towards compliance with the MUTCD. The idea is that anywhere you travel in the U.S., signage and traffic control devices will be the same and it should eliminate confusion for drivers. This gets down to the details of size, colors, fonts, and spacing on signs, the way traffic signals operate, the markings on pavement, among other things. It's fun to pick out glaring examples of non-compliance such as this. One final thing I want to point out, and this is not an error but more of a quirk found here in North Dakota. The mile markers on the I-94 business loops begin at 900 at the western end of the Medora business loop and go up as the business loops travel east. As each new loop starts, the numbering picks back up where it left off. I wasn't able to find out why they started at 900, but this explains the really high mile marker numbers on these roads. We conclude today's video here as we get back onto I-94 East. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help support our channel, please check out our merchandise at 504roadtrips.spreadshirt.com. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up, post a comment, subscribe, share and follow us on social media, and join us for our next 504 Road Trip.